In this first question, we're asked to calculate the energy of a photon whose electromagnetic radiation has the following frequency. Frequency equals 8.25 times 10 to the 12th inverse seconds. Yes. Now, according to Planck's equation, energy is equal to Planck's constant, which is this H that has a little hat on it, multiplied by frequency. So, uh, this is a really simple problem where we write down Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times uh, 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds, and then we uh, substitute in nu for our uh, frequency up here, 8.25 times 10 to the 12th inverse seconds. Those, you'll notice the inverse seconds, uh, which is really seconds in the denominator, cancel out these seconds, and uh, so you're left with units of joules, which are indeed units of energy. You throw that in your calculator, the final answer comes out to be 5.47 times 10 to the negative 21st. In part B, we're asked to determine what the uh, wavelength is of uh, a bunch of photons whose energy is equal to 2.87 times 10 to the negative uh, 18th joules. So once again, we need to determine what the wavelength is. As we've already stated, Planck's equation interrelates uh, energy to uh, Planck's constant multiplied by uh, frequency. You look at that and you don't see wavelength in there. So you might initially examine that and think, well, how in the world do I do this problem? Uh, you have to remember, of course, that there is a way of interrelating a wavelength and um, frequency, and that is by remembering that wavelength times frequency equals the speed of light. Now, that being said, you can rearrange this equation algebraically to show that frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by wavelength. You can then substitute that right in there for this. So energy is going to be equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by wavelength. Now, the question is asking us to determine what wavelength is. So what that means is that I have to re do some algebra to rearrange this so that I get wavelength on one side of the equation in the numerator and then everything else on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and do some algebra right here, algebra, and we'll see what we can come up with. We'll see that wavelength is equal to um, Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by energy. So now it's just substitution. Planck's constant is, of course, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Uh, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And uh, the energy that we've been given for this problem is 2.87 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. One thing that's beautiful about this is you'll notice that the units should all cancel out. I end up getting joules there, joules there, the seconds cancel each other out, and I'm left with an answer that has meters which, uh, well, we ask ourselves, is meters a proper unit for wavelength? Length? Meters? Yeah, I think so. So it's pretty much just plug and chug with your calculators, and you'll find out that the answer should be 6.93 times um, 10 to the negative 8. Now, although I sometimes skirt it under the rug, you'll notice that the number of significant figures that I'm using here is, is 3, which lines up very well with the value we've been given up here that has the, the fewest number of significant figures, which also happens to be 3. In the second problem, we're told that there's one type of sunburn uh, that occurs through exposure to UV light of a wavelength of 325 nanometers. So I'll go ahead and write that down there. And then in part A, it says, um, what is the energy of a photon of this wavelength? So once again, energy is equal to Planck's constant uh, multiplied by frequency. And we remember from our previous problem that frequency is going to be equal to uh, speed of light yeah, divided by wavelength. So we can uh, substitute frequency for, um, for the speed of light divided by wavelength. So at this point, all we have to do is throw in our numbers. Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds, multiplied by the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, uh, divided by wavelength. Wavelength is given to us in 325 nanometers. In order to have my units uh, match, though, I'm going to have to convert this to meters, because I don't have nanometers up here, I've got meters. So I'll take 325 nanometers. I remember, of course, that nano starts with the letter N, and so does the number 9. So uh, if I have a nanometers here, I've got 1 meters equal to uh, 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers. The nanometers cancel each other out. 325 uh, nanometers ends up being equal to 3 ends up being equal to 3.25 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. 
I can substitute that in here for my wavelength, 3.25 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. My meters cancel each other out, my seconds cancel each other out, and I'm left with joules, which is indeed a unit of energy, so that makes sense. Uh, plug and chug with your calculators, and we end up getting a final answer of uh, 6.12 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Now, in part B, it asks us what is the energy of a mole of these photons. So we have to keep in mind that there are 6.12 times 10 to the negative 19th joules in one photon. It's asking how many uh, joules are you going to find in an entire mole of photons. So uh, what I'm going to do is figure out how many individual photons are there in a mole. <clears throat> in one mole of photons, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and write photons on top, and I'll write mole on the bottom. If I have one mole of photons, how many individual photons do I have? Well, that's, of course, Avogadro's numbers, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So one mole of photons contains that many individual photons. The photons unit-wise cancel each other out, and I'm left with joules per mole. That, once again, tells me how many joules there are in one mole, which is, again, I think what this question is asking. What is the energy of a mole of these photons? Uh, so I throw that in my calculator, and I end up getting 3.68 uh, times 10 to the uh, fifth joules per mole. Uh, the last question is asking me how many photons there are in one millijoule burst of this radiation. Um, once again, when I'm doing uh, problems that involve unit analysis, dimensional analysis, converting from one unit, set of units to another, what I almost always do is select whatever uh, value I've been given that has no denominator unit, or no units in the denominator. So, uh, for, so this is the answer to part B, this is uh, part A up here. Part C right here, it tells me uh, one millijoule uh, burst of this radiation, and it's asking me, uh, my apologies, uh, how many photons, how many individual photons are there in a one millijoule burst of radiation? Um, I'm going to want, of course, do some unit analysis. So I've got one millijoule up top. I'm going to go ahead and go like this. <clears throat> what units am I going to want to put in the denominator here? Well, I want to be able to cancel out millijoules. So um, I'll put millijoules in the denominator. Units in the numerator, is there any way I can relate millijoules to something? Well, I've got joules over here in this value, so I can go ahead and put some joules in the numerator. I'll put in the numbers later, but all we have to do is track the units and make sure that we cancel out the units that we're starting with and end up going to the units that we need to go to. As long as we do that in the proper location, cancel out all the units, and then afterwards uh, throw in the numbers in the, in the correct places, we will always be right. So it's asking how many individual photons there are. Uh, we've determined, well, so I've got joules up here. I'm going to put joules in the denominator. And all the stuff I've got up here, do I have any uh, value that has joules uh, in a location and something else in another location unit-wise? The answer is yes, I've got joules here related to moles, so I can write down uh, moles in the numerator. And then um, my joules are going to kill each other, my millijoules are going to kill each other. But the question is asking, uh, sorry, uh, how many individual photons there are? Can I relate a mole to individual photons? In other words, if I have one mole, can I say how many individual photons there are in a mole? And the answer is yes. And that tells me, that takes me, I think, to the final uh, units that I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, it does, because it leaves me with photons as my units. So now it all, it, all it is is throwing in the correct uh, numbers. If I have one joule, how many millijoules are there in one joule? We should have that memorized that there are 1,000 millijoules in one joule. There's 1,000 milli anythings in the base unit of that. Uh, and according to what we determined for this particular form of energy, how many joules are there in a mole? Well, we've got one mole in the denominator. I've got 3.68 times 10 to the fifth. I'm running out of room. Joules. Now over here, can I relate photons to moles? If I've got one mole of photons, how many individual photons do I have? Well, just as we saw before, that's Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I often joke with my students that Avogadro's number also happens to be a band. I know because I saw it on iTunes once. I haven't actually listened to see if any of their songs are good or if they don't suck, but I do invite you to do so and tell me later. 
From this point on, it's just plug and chug, and that will get me to the number of photons that I have in one millijoule burst of this radiation. I throw that into my calculator, the answer ends up being 1.63. 1 1.63 times 10 to the 15th. 10 to the 15th individual photons.